Hello all you happy people, and welcome to the 2024 season of Animated Antic Reviews. I'm your host Antic, a guy that reviews animated films on here because it's one of the few things I'm good at in life. Well, 2024 has just gotten started and we got a whole slew of animated films upon us coming out this year. From original films, adaptations, IP films, and sequels. This is going to be a pretty big year, so let's not wait any further and jump right into the new season. Our first animated film of the year comes to us from DreamWorks, a studio that has three animated films coming out this year that I'm all looking forward to. And the first film they have out is called Orion and the Dark, an adaptation of a picture book written by Emma Yarlett. Now, this isn't the first time DreamWorks has adapted a picture book as they have before in the past, though it's often been hit and miss. Sometimes it's worked, like with Shrek, and sometimes it is not, like with The Boss Baby. But I can say that this one was one I was actually looking forward to. This film has been in the works for a while. At one point, Gendy Tartakovsky was attached to it back in 2015. But even then, this still had some real talent behind it that caught my attention. For one, it's from DreamWorks, who I feel has definitely started to get their mojo back. The cast that they picked was great. The book about a young boy being shown the joys of night by an anthropomorphic character called The Dark certainly felt like it would work as a film, unlike The Boss Baby. And also, this film had an excellent screenwriter working on it. That being Oscar winner Charlie Kaufman. And I really love Charlie Kaufman's scripts. He's easily one of the most creative and witty screenwriters working today, and I certainly love a lot of films he's written. Being John Malkovich, Adaptation, and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind are all phenomenal movies, and I highly recommend them. Kaufman is also no stranger to animation, as he wrote and co-directed the 2015 stop-motion film Anomalisa, which I really loved. The film followed a lonely author named Michael, who on a business trip to Cincinnati, meets a woman named Lisa and starts to feel a connection again after being disconnected from others for years. It's a really beautiful film that showcases loneliness and what it means to find someone you can connect with and understand again. And it also has a lot of typical Kaufman trademarks, from surrealist moments, awkward characters, and a bit of sadness. Also, it has some gorgeous stop motion to boot. That being said, I wouldn't call it a masterpiece since I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to feel fully about the main character, Michael. He does some things in the film that I really found myself uncomfortable by, and it just made me wonder whether I was supposed to find him sympathetic or a creep. It's mainly the issue I have with Kaufman's stuff as a director. I really feel detached from his characters, and I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about them in the end, especially compared to the characters in the films he's only written, where directors like Spike Jones and Michel Gondry brought them to life. But despite the problems I have with the film, I still think Anomalisa is really great, and I do highly recommend checking it out. Especially if you love adult animation. Anyway, getting back to Orion and Dark, I was pretty excited to see what DreamWorks had in store with this given the book it was based on, and with Charlie Kaufman writing the screenplay since I've always thought he was a fantastic screenwriter, and I was really curious to see what he would do writing a family film since this is the first film he's made that's not exclusively for adults. And what they came up with was a film that I ended up really enjoying and finding fantastic. I'm just gonna say it, I really loved Orion in the Dark. This one really surprised me and worked so well and ended up being a lot of fun. Honestly, I think this is yet another winning film from DreamWorks and another excellent addition to their catalog that benefits from having another great script from Charlie Kaufman. A young boy named Orion, played by Jacob Tremblay, is a nervous and anxious fifth grader who has a lot of crazy fears and has been keeping a journal detailing them. However, the biggest fear that he faces is at night when it gets dark and his worries about the occurrences that happen. However, one night, Orion is visited by an entity known as the Dark, played by Paul Walter Hauser, whom spreads his darkness around the world and has been frustrated by Orion being scared by him. Hoping to get him to conquer his fears, Dark takes him on his nightly journey around the world, showing what he does alongside the other night entities. Sleep, played by Natasha Dimitru, Unexplained Noises, played by Golda Rashuvul, Insomnia, played by Nat Saxon, Quiet, played by Aparna Nacheria, and their leader Sweet Dreams, played by Angela Bassett. And so, Orion has taken around the world and has shown the other beauties of nighttime. And that's all I'm going to say about the film, because if I say more, it head into spoiler territory, and I don't want to get too far. I'll just start off by saying that the story I told you and what you saw from the trailers and clips only barely scratched the surface of this film. Emma Yarlett's book was pretty relatively simple, so naturally there was a lot that could be explored than just a kid not being afraid of the dark anymore, and DreamWorks Kaufman and director Sean Charmatz took a lot of advantage. 
The film does go a lot deeper as it explores these night entities and what seemingly is their pros and cons at working during the night, and I really like that Charlie Kaufman made this story a lot more ambitious. It does break a lot of the rules you would see in stories, which is typical for films that he writes, and it ends up going down very creative and interesting rabbit holes. It does kind of take certain angles while also diving into the idea of storytelling, and I like that an animated film does that alongside telling a story about the beauty of nighttime and conquering anxieties. It's a very well written film. Not to mention, it's exceptionally funny. A lot of the dark comedy that Kaufman is known for is present here, and I found it hilarious, particularly as we saw how Sleep did her job. Oh my god, that was crazy, and I loved it. Now, when it comes to the story, I've seen a lot of critics compare this film to Inside Out, and I can see why. It does have that Pete Docter, Pixar flair present to it, with showcasing how certain things of the world work, and them having jobs and whatnot. But I'll say, this still feels unique enough to do its own thing, and doesn't seem like it's trying to copy Pixar. Unlike other films that I can mention. Ahem. Though, I'll say that this film reminds me more of the earlier versions of Inside Out rather than the final version, where joy was paired with fear rather than sadness. While the themes of conquering fears weren't meant for that story, it was for this, and it certainly works. Though the only part of the story where it does stumble is in the third act, where it does get a bit convoluted. I appreciate the angle that it was going for, and I do think that it does have some creativity to it, but it does get a little too complicated and weird to follow at times, and it also seems to go on for a bit longer than it needs to. However, the first two acts of this film are really strong and well written that the film is still really well held up, even if it might not completely stick the landing in the third. One thing that I also really liked about this film is the animation. The film had its animation done by Micros Imagery, who's worked with DreamWorks on Captain Underpants, and once again, they really worked their magic on this film. It has this storybook look to it, with the world feeling like a picture book illustration, and also getting some 2D influence, particularly as it comes from Orion's Fear Journal. Not to mention that it has some terrific character designs to boot. I really like the night entities in particular. They kind of had this Muppet-like feel to them with how they were designed and moved, with sleep looking like a stuffed animal, unexplained noises like a weird instrument, insomnia a mosquito, and quiet a mouse. It's simple, but it works. I also truly love Dark's design and how he moved and turned the world from day into night, as it's basically like watching ink spread on a paper. It's really creative. Though the thing that I thought was really great about this film were the characters, and all of them are very likable, well-written, and performed. I really liked Orion as a protagonist, and I could feel the anxieties he has. Yeah, some of them are a bit ridiculous and a bit much, but considering he's a 10-year-old kid, it makes sense. And I feel the way he grew throughout the film and learns to take on his fears felt natural. It also helped that Jacob Tremblay is once again fantastic and delivers another knockout performance again. I really gotta say, Tremblay has really been excellent in picking some great animated films to be in, and has delivered some excellent performances. He already has a great Pixar, Cartoon Saloon, and DreamWorks film under his belt, and he's gonna be in a Leica film next year. I'm really happy for him because he is truly one of the best young actors working today, and I hope he goes far. But I digress. Even though I really liked Orion, I think my favorite character in the film has to be Dark. He's really funny and charming, and you can tell he means well despite his flaws, and Paul Walter Hauser perfectly captures that. Though the one thing that I really liked about the character was his own anxieties. He's kind of seen as a nuisance to the other night entities and is also jealous of his polar opposite light, played by Ike Brainholtz, and is also really frustrated and bummed by being seen as this unlikable presence, and it made me feel for him. There's a great scene where him and Orion talk at a tea shop in China during the night entity's break time that was really great and it made me feel for him. The two have a great dynamic together, and they are truly well-written characters. And I also thought the other night entities were tons of fun and very well-performed. I mean, casting Angela Bassett as Sweet Dreams is just perfect, since she's a legend. So, yeah, wrapping things up, I really loved Orion in the Dark a lot. Even though it stumbles in the third act, it's really helped by its funny and ambitious story and screenplay from Charlie Kaufman, excellent storybook animation, and a quirky cast of characters with fantastic performances by its cast. This is another winner from DreamWorks, and I highly recommend checking it out. It's definitely worth a watch on Netflix. I do wish that I could have seen it on a bigger screen, but I'm just exceptionally happy that it was still made regardless. With that said, I'm going to give Orion in the Dark 
a nine. This was really a creative and fun film. We're already off to a good start for both 2024 and DreamWorks, who has two more films coming out this year. And they really are starting things on a high note, as this film, despite it being a film that celebrates dark, is one that really, truly shines bright. Like I'm wrapped in a warm blanket. You know, if you're into that kind of thing. 